Hi, I'm Shoestring Jay and welcome back to my channel. Today I thought I would talk about food stores and why it's wise to keep an emergency store of food in your home. I'm not talking about some of the preppers you see on YouTube who have massive garage is full. I've seen them massive like a triple garage full of food and stores. Um, I am not predicting Armageddon. I, If Armageddon happened and the whole world was coming to an end, I think I would curl up quietly in the corner and just die rather than run around trying to shoot people over a can of beans. So I'm not talking about that, not being alarmist. I just think it's wise to have stores of food that you can grab if for some reason you suddenly don't have money or you don't have time or you're not able to go out to the shops to buy food for whatever reason. I think for us, because I was worried about Brexit and what was going to happen to supplies after Brexit, I kind of imagined it would be immediately after Brexit um, that we'd start having supply problems but in actual fact it's a couple of years later that we're starting to have them now but I had coming up to Brexit a really good store the bottom shelf of the larder was completely full of stuff that we didn't really touch apart from just to make sure that they were kind of needed to be used we might have kind of circulate things like rice and pasta and use that and bring some new stuff in but tins could just stay there for ages um, that was full and also in our spare room there's a big sort of storage area under the bed so that was also mostly full and I was really really glad of those stores not post Brexit immediately as I had anticipated but when the pandemic hit and it was difficult to find everything you needed on the shelves of the supermarket I didn't want to go out to the supermarket very much I wanted to stay indoors and stay safe so it was great to have stores at that point it does mean that we used quite a lot of them up so I'm at the point now where I'm building them up again and I just think it's useful to have some basics really so um, my daughter's been out to various shops this week and she's picked me up a few bits on the way and herself as well because she's kind of taking my following my example if you like but it's, it's useful just you know if you don't have the time or the inclination to shop one day you just come home from work and you're just shattered if you know you've got some good stores then you've got food you don't you could probably miss a whole week going to the supermarket if you needed to if you're tired or unwell um if you live in a remote area and you have snow or something like that and you can't easily get to the shops it's really worth having some stores so the less you go to the supermarkets or wherever you go to buy your food of course the less temptation there is to buy lots of stuff you don't need so um, that's another good reason to keep some good stores but you know you could have a real blip in your finances I mean all three of my daughters lost their jobs during the pandemic um, so you know they they having some decent stores helped them out I don't think they have the stores that I have but they also had savings which I was told them to do as well have some savings so if you have a blip like that in your finances and you know you've got maybe a good month's food it just gives you a little bit of of headspace and and leeway particularly if you've got kids to feed so you know I'm not suggesting in any way panic buying and in actual fact logically if you have a good store then you don't have to panic buy because you know you've got stuff in. I mean, I didn't go panic buying anything during the pandemic. I knew we had some good stuff, so I just didn't do it. I just waited until things had calmed down a little bit and then I went out and got some more things or I started using alternative sources of food like the farm shop. But um, it's a good, th good re idea to really take stock of what you've got anyway um, so you know what's in your, your cupboards, in your fridge, in your freezers, and and then you can make space for more things you know as as and when you go so um i'll just show you the things that we picked up this week to give you an idea of the kind of things that i'm looking out for and then um i'll go through the list of things that i tend to try and keep in um so little and aldi don't seem to have new potatoes or, or any kind of potatoes in tins at the moment so as my daughter was passing Asda she ran in and got some potatoes for us so they were 33p for a 550 gram tin so that's a, a sizable tin and although I don't love new potatoes in a tin 
they are fine. You can add them to things. You can add them to casseroles. They're good in the air fryer as well, actually. Fried up, they taste a bit better. I wouldn't just like them warmed up like that. But I know some people do. Maybe with some gravy on top, they'd be okay. Um, but they're, they're useful to kind of pad out a meal. So I've got three tins of those. And one thing I should say as well is that I don't buy stuff for my stores that I don't like. Um, <laughs> that sounds actually daft that you might do that. But I've seen people buying you know, tons and tons of, I don't know, say beans that they don't eat and they can't eat. I mean, I will have a few cans of beans because other people in my household might like to eat them. I can't eat them myself. They make me quite unwell. So um, they won't be for me. So I wouldn't be getting masses of beans. And what's the point? You know, if it's not something that you're going to use, don't buy it. Um, so there's three of those. And the other thing that Aldi and Lidl don't seem to often do is peas. And I'm not a big fan of things like tinned carrots, so I won't be buying tinned carrots. I don't like them. Uh, or I suppose you could dump them in a stew again and they would probably be acceptable. I'd rather have the frozen version. But tinned peas, I don't mind. They're okay. They were 21p a can. And we got two cans of those. Fruit is something else. I mean, I am really old fashioned in my tastes and I love peaches and custard. So I'll have peaches and custard anyway. But for my stores, if I can't get hold of fresh fruit, then it's good to have some cans. Fresh fruit, in, well, sorry, tinned fruit can be quite expensive, oddly. Um, pears seem to be quite expensive in a can. So I don't usually bother with those. Um, but peaches, they seem to be the most cost effective option. So those were 55p each. I think grapefruit segments could be quite nice in a can and mandarins are reasonable as well. So they're the other things I will stock up on. Obviously pasta, obviously pasta. And I've always got lots of pasta in the stores, but I didn't have any spaghetti. So we picked up some value spaghetti for 20p a pack. Doesn't have to cost you a lot to have a little store. You don't have to spend a lot. None of this has cost a lot. It's not too expensive and it'll last forever. So we've got two of those. Um, the other standby that I really enjoy is um, tinned fish. So tuna is something that we have. But this time we bought sardines in tomato sauce. I absolutely love these in a kind of sardine spaghetti mixture with some tomatoes and garlic and maybe some olives very simple, nutritious, and really, really cheap. So they're 31p each. Um, and I'll use maybe a couple of those if I did a sardine spaghetti for us all. Um, they're also just good on toast. It's a good basic thing on toast. I mean, most people have baked beans on toast. I can't eat those. Sardines on toast are good. So we've got four of those to add to our stores. We've got some in there already. Um, and the other thing I like to have a couple of bottles of at least is some oil. And I'm currently buying this cold pressed rapeseed oil from Lidl because it's in a glass bottle. I'm trying to buy glass bottles and it's cheaper than olive oil and it's produced in the UK. So that's good, really. It's more eco-friendly. Um, and this was 149 for a bottle. So I've got one of those. I do have an olive oil in my stores as well, I think. So that's all we bought this time. The other things that I like to have a lot of, tinned tomatoes, they're so versatile. Um, you can add them to anything, can't you? Tinned tomatoes, chopped tomatoes usually, but I'll also get some whole ones as well. Uh, any other canned vegetables, sweet corn is another favourite in cans. I say carrots are not my favourite, but I'll buy them occasionally. Uh, canned pulses. So although I don't eat a lot of beans, I can tolerate chickpeas. So we have a lot of chickpeas and um, some cans of lentils. Again, I don't often find those in the discount supermarket. So that's something I would normally pick up from a supermarket like Sainsbury's or Asda. Um, canned fruit, as I mentioned that already. Canned meat. So I don't love things like the stewed steak. I bought a few before at the start of my collection for Brexit and we ended up eating them later and it was just horrible. I just thought I'd rather just have a veggie meal. I'd rather have a chickpea curry than stewed steak. So I wouldn't be buying that again. I do like a corned beef hash though, so I'll buy corned beef. It's not particularly cheap, but it's quite good to have some in your store cupboard. Hot dog sausages are a probably more economical alternative. So you can chop those up and put them in pasta, make them into casseroles and do all sorts of things with those. Just have them as they are in a bun. Um, they're not the healthiest of meats. They are processed, but, you know, 
you, you're just trying to add some variety and some protein so it's worth having some of those. Dried fruit, so um, you could spend a lot on dried fruit. I tend to pick up the value packs of dried fruit. Um, in Asda they do the value smart price dried fruit with peel, that's good for baking, but if I just wanted to sprinkle some raisins on my um, porridge, I would just go for that. So dried fruit's quite good. Uh, porridge oats always, always have lots of porridge oats because it's a great cheap breakfast, plus it can bulk out other meals that you're making. Um, Weetabix, think all things plain cereal, that doesn't last forever, so obviously you've got to keep an eye on the use by dates, you don't want to end up with a load of stale cereal. Um, but Weetabix, something plain, we'll, we'll occasionally have some of those in our stores. Um, because I have lactose free milk, I'll get some long life lactose milk and stick that in there, but again, it doesn't last forever, so I keep an eye on that. If I wasn't drinking lactose free, I would get powdered milk. I think it's really worth having powdered milk in your stores. Fruit juice, just a few, not many. I don't drink a lot of fruit juice. Um, rice, obviously, lots of rice and pasta, as I've mentioned already, because it's a great bulk filler for you and it lasts an awful long time. Tea and coffee. So I stock up. I tend to buy a lot of tea bags because I'm quite fussy with the tea bags that I like. Um, I don't like value brands. Um, I don't want Sainsbury's own. Sainsbury's own is good. Um, but I will tend to go for PG Tips or Yorkshire Tea or something like that. So I I stock up on those when I see them at a reasonable price in B&M or Home Bargains. They don't often come up in Lidl and Aldi and they tend to be quite expensive elsewhere. Flour and bread flour, always make sure I have good stores of those and I've started adding more bread flour to the stores because I've started baking more bread so it makes sense. I do have some yeast in there although I'm generally making sourdough at the moment so I don't need yeast, yeast. and that's the other good thing, you don't actually need yeast to make bread, you can make your own sourdough starter. Um, sugar, you know if you're feeling a bit miserable and you haven't got much in. It's nice to have some sugar on something. You'd have sugar on your cereal or you can bake with it, have it in your coffee, whatever. Baking powder, again, good for baking. Peanut butter, jam and honey. I make my own jam. Mr. Shoestring, aka Justin, and his brother keep bees, particularly really Jonathan's actually bees, but Justin helps him out. Um, so we have a good stock of honey and we're never gonna run out of honey, but it's good to have that in your stores. And um, so I make my own jam so I've got masses of that at the moment and peanut butter is always good because you can have it in various things you can use it in baking or just eat it as it is tinned fish I've always meant, already mentioned although I had sardines there tuna is another one that I stock up on mackerel I like that in tomato sauce as well and um, tinned salmon as well although that's quite pricey but it could be quite good in things um, Sometimes it's quite handy to have some casserole mixes and jars, bolognese sauce, that kind of thing. And I tend to look out for those kind of things on approved food. So that's a website where you buy things that are near the end of their use by date, or not use by date, best before date. So there is a difference. They're still actually perfectly fine to use. And you can get a lot of store cupboard staples from approved food. I'll leave my referral friend link in the description box below that they're worth going. You have to Bear in mind there's a £5 delivery charge, I think it's still £5, um, but you know you could share that with a neighbour or a friend or just make sure you order enough to make it worthwhile, it's only similar to what the supermarkets charge you for delivery isn't it? Because you want to spice up your stores you need to have some things like spices, maybe some curry powder, some dried mixed herbs, that kind of thing. I always have loads of that stuff anyway and need to use them, so I don't put extra in my stores separately. Um, jars of curry paste, again, for the same reason, it's good to have jars of curry paste in your stores. You can make all sorts of nice curries. And coconut milk, I love a creamy curry, so I like to keep coconut milk in my stores as well. Uh, vegetable and olive oil, I've already mentioned that. And another thing that some people perhaps don't think about is painkillers. So I keep some paracetamol and ibuprofen and extra in my stores because, you know, if you can't get out and you're ill and you've got no painkillers and things, then that's grim. Plasters and basic first aid supplies are also good to have and worth having anyway, to be honest. Um, candles and matches, just in case you had a power cut. I am old enough to remember the 70s. I was a small child in the 70s and we had loads of power cuts. It was constant at one point. We had a three-day week. The country was in crisis and 
we had candles. I remember sitting by around the fire with my mum and dad cooking like a tinned potato and meat stew over the fire and thinking this is all very exciting but uh, for an adult it probably wasn't that exciting get a bit wearing can't it when you've got no light but we thought it was great and most exciting to have candles and um, an open fire uh, batteries and torches not all of us trust our children with candles or anybody in our family you might not might not want to risk it so having a good supply of batteries and torches is a really good idea soap and toilet rolls and we all know what happened with the toilet rolls during um covid at the beginning i actually have get my toilet roll from who gives a crap so i wasn't worried about that because it's a kind of subscription service and i get that on a regular basis anyway so i wasn't concerned but if i couldn't have got loo roll i wouldn't have been punching somebody in the supermarket and fighting over loo roll i would have literally have cut up a towel and used family wipe and got a big bowl of disinfectant not to everybody's taste, but, you know, needs must. Sometimes that's what I would have done. I wouldn't have been having punch-ups in the supermarket aisles, as I said. So toilet rolls is a good thing to have a few of anyway. So we always keep a well-stocked freezer as well. So we haven't grown our own vegetables this year too much. We have had some fruit. Um, we had a bit of a year off because we wanted to do other things and it's quite time-consuming. But... You don't have to grow your own to keep stuff in the freezer. You can just buy it frozen. You know, Iceland's quite a good prices for things like that. Or you can buy fresh produce that's being sold off cheaply, maybe from markets or in the supermarket, and freeze them yourself. Um, you are obviously, if you have frozen stuff, you are dependent on having a good power supply. So um, your freezer will stay frozen for a while if you keep the door shut and don't keep opening it. But you can't rely on it you need to have some things that are non-perishable and non-frozen as well so i i just buy value brands a lot of the time i don't buy fancy brands you're paying for the marketing and the packaging and that kind of thing i'm not interested in that so um what else did i want to say on this um yeah i've mentioned approved food already haven't i and you don't have to buy everything at once so you know i've just bought a few things this week and i'll buy that's probably slightly more than i usually buy but generally i'll buy two or three cans of something a week when I go shopping, you don't notice the cost. Nobody else notices you clearing the shelves. So it doesn't harm anybody else. Um, and that's what I'll do when I want to kind of build things up a bit. And then I get to the stage where I've really got enough in there and I can stop. But I don't want things to sit around for ages. So I do keep an eye on the stores and circulate and, and move things around, start to use flour that's sat in there for a bit, that kind of thing. So um, it's just worth it. For me, for my peace of mind, it's worth me having some good stores of food. But as I say, I am not a prepper. I don't panic and I don't panic buy. And this means I don't have to panic buy. So what do you think about that? Do you keep an emergency store of food? And what are the things that you would suggest are really kind of vital to keeping your emergency stores? Let me know in the comments below. And don't forget, if you enjoyed this video, please do give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate that. And don't forget to subscribe. Until next time, see you then. Bye then.